Christian, there will be some things that may be new to you. There will be some things that you know and sometimes you need a refresher. There are some things that I could preach on for weeks and weeks and months at a time. And finances is one of them, but I won't do that to you because you'll get tired of me talking about what God has done for me. Amen. But this is one of the things that I think I could talk on for weeks at a time because after you accept Jesus Christ, you need to be introduced to the Holy Spirit. The person that will walk with you and talk with you and will give you guidance and will give you counsel. The success of your life after you accept Christ is going to be based on your walk with the Holy Spirit. The Lord had put this in my heart this morning, and I believe that's why he wants me to share this just for the next several weeks about the importance of walking in the Spirit. Amen? If there's been one benefit that I could say that has actually revolutionized my life, it has been the life that I have with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Because... You don't come born knowing everything. But the Bible says that the Holy Spirit will bring all things back to your remembrance. The scripture says that we'll have an unction from God, that we'll have an anointing from God, that we'll know things that we did not study. And sometimes in the wee hours of the morning, God wants to talk to you. And before this series is over, I'll talk to you about what to do when you wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning and what you do when you wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning. And sometimes it's not good just to be so quick to go back to sleep. So if God wakes you up and you know that you are a sound sleeper and you keep finding yourself up at 3 o'clock in the morning, there's something that God wants to impart into you. The Holy Spirit wants to talk to you. And so maybe you have a family and maybe you're raising kids and maybe you have grandkids and he can't get your attention throughout the day. So he will wait and he'll, he'll tap you on the foot and, and wake you up. Y'all don't want to talk to me this morning. I could talk to you about spiritual things all day long. And so uh, I think I may have shared this before, but I remember when I was young and I was growing in the Lord and around two or three o'clock in the morning, I would hear a doorbell. And it took me a while to realize that it wasn't like our actual doorbell. But I would hear what sounded like our doorbell. And it would wake me up. And that, the reason I could tell that it was the Holy Spirit is because it wouldn't wake Tarsha up. And I knew it was just time. It took me, for, it took me a while. I don't know if you've ever read the story of uh, Samuel when he was in the temple and he, he had his experience with God when God would begin to call his name and he thought it was uh, the priest and it wasn't the priest and finally it dawned on him that it was God wanting to talk with him. And so just to get up in the presence of the Lord and have God talk to you about you and yourself and your family and, and your job and, and the people on your job and how to deal with them and give you some guidance and counsel you, you, you can't pay money for that. Amen. As Jesus walked the earth and he got the 12 disciples who became apostles, one of the last things he told them is that they needed a relationship with God. Sam, can you put my scriptures up, please? 
I just want to run through these. John chapter 6, verse 63. Jesus said, it is the spirit that quickeneth. Say quickeneth. So the flesh profiteth nothing but the words that I speak unto you. They are spirit and they are life. John chapter 7, verse 38 says, He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. John chapter 14, verse 16, it says, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Jesus knew that he was leaving, but notice this. He told the disciples, you need this walk with the Holy Spirit. I'm leaving, but he's coming, and he will be another comforter. John chapter 14, verse 26, it says, But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, I'm old school, so I like that translation, Holy Ghost. Now we call him Holy Spirit, right? But back, back in old school church, he was just known as the Holy Ghost, right? And so it says, Whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you that we have a force in the earth known as the Holy Spirit who wants to help us live a victorious life if I offered you Christ and we stopped at Christ and I did not introduce you to the power of the Holy Spirit I would be negligent in my duties because you need to know that after you accept Christ Christ is what gets you into heaven. He begins to break power in your life, but the introduction of the Holy Spirit will remain the power in your life. Jesus said, I want you to go wait until you be endued with power, the power of the Holy Spirit. A lot of times people have issues because they are not listening to the Holy Spirit. Before this sermon is over, I will, we'll spend some time on a Sunday just talking about how the Holy Spirit talks to us. Because he may sound like a professor's voice. He may sound like your parents' voice. He, he may sound like a voice, may sound like your own voice. And we have to understand that it's really not us. It's the Holy Spirit wanting to talk through us. Amen. You know, there are many people who go to church who've not given control of their life to Jesus. And then there are some who have given control of their life to Jesus, but they do not have a walk with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And therefore you keep stumbling and you keep walking in defeat and you keep making the same mistakes over and over and over and over and over and over. You want prayer for the same thing over and over and over and over. You fasted for the same thing over and over and over, and the Holy Spirit has simply told you what to do. Oh, y'all not going to like me this morning. At some point in time, you have to give up control of your own life to what the Holy Spirit wants to tell you in terms of him directing your life. So we sing songs that say, I belong to you. But do we really? My life is not my own. To you, I belong. But, but do we really? Amen? Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, and this is our foundational text this morning. Paul told the church at Galatia, or the churches at Galatia, I should say, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh walk in the spirit and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh say walk in the spirit say walk in the spirit and so walk actually comes from I just feel like teaching this morning so so walk comes from the word peripateo say peripateo Say peripateo, which means walk. It means to walk. It means to walk in an ethical sense. I like that. Because as you walk, as you're on your Christian journey, you ought to walk in an ethical sense. Amen. Amen. So that's how we conduct our lives. So when Paul told the churches at Galatia to walk in the spirit, 
He's telling them to walk ethically, to walk honestly, right? Because, see, there are some things that if you listen to the Holy Spirit, he won't allow you to do because it's not ethical. Oh, you're preaching good, Pastor Randy. I started off preaching good, whether you say amen this morning or not. So, so peripateo is actually a compounded word, and peri comes from, uh, come from the first word peri, which means comprehensively around, and it means to look and to do something with intensity, all around on every side. And it means when you walk, you are looking to make sure all of your bases are covered. So when he says walk in the spirit, that means every day you are waking up with the Holy Spirit. You're spending time with him and you are allowing him to help you make sure all your bases are covered. So, so I don't know if you've ever been in the military, but um, people who have been in the Navy and you've been on a submarine, you understand what a periscope is, right? So the periscope goes up and it has a camera on it and you turn it all the way around so you can see everything that's going on. It, even though you're under the water, you can raise the periscope up and it'll help you see everything that's going on. Yeah. The Holy Spirit wants to walk with us like that. Yeah. that. That when we talk to him, because we don't know everything, but he knows everything. Yeah. And so if we depend on him, he begins to show us everything around us that we need to know in order to live successful lives. So it means comprehensively around, it means all around, on every side, all of your face is covered, and patel simply means to walk, and it means to walk properly. It means to walk around in a complete circuit, going full circle, Amen. meaning all of your bases are covered. Oh, how I wish God's people strive to have all of their bases covered. Y'all don't want to talk to me this morning. This, this is just our, our introduction because every Christian should be walking under the power and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He will tell you how to go and where to go and what time to go. There have been times I've been going to work when I worked my secular job, and he would say, don't go to work that way today. Go, go another way. And he would say this, that, and the other, and so forth and so on. And I would find out later why he told me to go a different route. And, and in some cases, I never found out why he told me to go a different route. But I just know that when I went in the car that morning, I heard the voice say, go this way today. It's the Holy Spirit. Does this make sense to you? Let, let me share this, and, 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 and I don't share this testimony that often because of how it affects uh, people, but back in 1995, <laughs> it's a long time ago for some people, I was at work, and I, I was working at a place called the Federal Reserve Bank, and it's in downtown Oklahoma City, uh, 226 Dean A. McGee. And what we would do at the Federal Reserve Bank is that we would, we would process checks and, you know, from checks from smaller banks, they would send their checks up to us. We would process the checks. That way, you know, if you lived in a small town and you wrote a check somewhere, that check had to be processed, right? So the money has to come out of your account even though you wrote it somewhere else. So that's what we were able to do at that time because smaller banks did not have the machines that we had and they didn't want to afford them. So they just made a contract with the Fed to do that. We also put money into circulation, right? So, so at any given time, we were responsible for millions of dollars. And yes, I saw a lot of people who started out with some integrity, but y'all don't want to talk to me. Because we also took money out of circulation, right? All the money that was torn and wadded had gum, all of that. And so we would take it out and, and, and you know, we would check for counterfeits and, you know, things of that nature. That, that's what I did on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and that's why even to this day, I can feel money and know if it's a counterfeit or not. Because just spending time with money, because when you spend time with the authentic all of your life, then when something is counterfeit, you know it immediately. No one has to tell you. You can just feel it. You're like, oh, no, this, this, is, this is not right, right? And so, so I was there. I remember just being there one day, and I, I, I went to work. And I, when the Federal Reserve Bank, we had a cafeteria uh, upstairs, and I had, worked, uh, I had worked that morning. And by the time I got upstairs to our cafeteria, the cafeteria was closed. And so, but that wasn't a problem because what I would normally do when our cafeteria was closed, I would just walk across the street 
because across the street from the Federal Reserve Bank was what they called the old courthouse, right? I don't know how many people are familiar with downtown Oklahoma City, but the old courthouse is still there today. And then if you, uh, so I would go there and that's where I would get breakfast if I missed the time where I would go uh, to my, uh, uh, to the Fed's cafeteria, I would just go across the street. And one particular morning, like I said, I had missed our cafeteria because it had closed. I went across the street to the cafeteria across the street. And so I got my little, you know, biscuits and gravy because that's when I wasn't paying attention to what I ate at the time. <laughs> and I had this thought that if I went to the building that was right next to the old post office building, that's where my credit union was, and I could go get some money out of the credit union and still make it back, I thought, before anyone knew that I was gone too long. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Because, you know, sometimes when some people break, some people break, but when we break, <laughs> some of y'all, y'all will get that later. Y'all will get that later. And I heard this thought say, you don't need to go over there and get to the bank. You need to go ahead and go back to work. And I had just preached a sermon on stealing. And one of the things that I had talked about in the sermon was stealing time from your boss, yeah. right? And so, you know, and stealing tools. There are, more, there are some people who have more tools at home than they do at work because you keep, keep bringing tools home, right? And I'll never forget, I was going back and forth with the Holy Spirit saying, if I go to the bank, I'll be the first one there because the bank's open at nine o'clock and I'll be the first one there. Yeah. I'll get in line, I'll get my money, and then I'll go back to work. Yeah. The Holy Spirit said, no, 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 you just preached a sermon series uh -huh. on stealing. Your break is over. Right. You need to get back to work. Uh -huh. I went back to work. Went, so I went from the old post office, went back across the street, went to the place that I was working got in the elevator, went back down to the basement where I was working, and before I got off the elevator, everything started shaking. That was the day of the Merle bombing. I didn't know. I was going to the post office, or I was going to the credit union, saying I'm going to be first in line at 9 o'clock and I'm going to get my money even before people realize I'm gone. I'll be there and back. And when I, the elevator doors opened, everything started shaking. We didn't know what had happened. We thought, like, is this like a trash truck that's too close to us? What's going on? And then we found out that tragedy had happened. And so they, they pulled us out. They, they said, everybody's got to clear the building. We went down the back ramp of the, the bank where I work because that's where all of the, the Loomis trucks would come. And then they didn't really have a plan. So they, they put us, they told us to go back in the building, right? Because they thought maybe there are other bombs that might be going off and they didn't know what to do. My parents were upset. They were calling. I couldn't get her out because the phones weren't working. And I ended up getting a ride to my grandmother's house who lived off of, Fifth Street in Oklahoma City. It was like 10 of us. And so I couldn't even get to my own car because my own car by that time was part of the crime scene because that's how close we were. And when I realized what was going on, the Lord took me back for, to him saying, you need to get back to work. This is how important sometimes walking in the spirit can actually be. 1995, April of that year, Tarsha was pregnant with our first child who was born that year in October, who the enemy would have loved for our child to be born without a father. Yeah. Say, walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. I don't give you that testimony to scare you. I give you that testimony to make you aware yes. that God is talking. Yes, that God knows what you do not know. 
He knows what happens before you know what happened. And the reason I said that sometimes I don't give this testimony because there are 168 people who were lost. That affects families and friends. And, and I don't know, for a long time, I felt like, God, why did you tell me to go back to work? And then I was so thankful that I listened to the voice of, for something so simple, because I can't tell you how many times the Holy Spirit has told me something, and I disregarded it. And I went on and did my, what I wanted to do my way. But that day, there would have been tragic consequences. Is this making sense? So, so you don't know why some people run and shout and and scream and holler and cry and just lay out before the Lord. Because even if they don't tell you, they're my, you can tell like, oh, God has done something for them. And so whether or not you know what it is or how it happened or how long ago it was. And so when I look back, there's nothing that I could do to ever repay God for sparing me that day. That day. Because when I did go home, it was terrible. When, when we begin to see the tragedy and the people and the bodies and the blood and all of the things that happened, and this was before I was in law enforcement, and it was, it was just a tragic day. And I was on my way to the credit bureau, withdrawing my $15 before anyone knew that I was missing. And before Tarsha knew, I was withdrawing money without her knowing it. Because we were supposed to be on a budget. Is this making sense? How many times has the Holy Spirit talked to you about certain things and we neglected to hear what he was saying? Some of us have unnecessary relapses. God has delivered you. And now that same thing is knocking on your door. The Holy Spirit is saying, don't answer. And you still keep opening the door. And then you want prayer for something that the Holy Spirit told you not to do in the first place. Am I just talking to myself or is there anybody else in here who, who has heard the voice of the Holy Spirit and you still did whatever it is you wanted to do? That's why the Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Spirit comes from the Greek word pneuma, which means wind, it means spirit, it means breath. It means that God wants to blow on your life. He wants to blow in some things that you don't have and he wants to blow out of some things that he wants you to let go. Pneuma. Pneuma is where we get the same word pneumonia from, where, where it starts affecting your breath, in your lungs. And so God says, I want to blow on you. When we first meet Adam in Scripture, no sooner than God made him did he blow into him. You cannot truly live unless the Holy Spirit blows on you. He, he's got to breathe in you, and he doesn't breathe in you one day. He wants to breathe in you and on you every single day of your life because you don't go through something just one day. You go through something every single day. So he needs to blow in and you need to allow him to blow out. You're like, well, I'm holding on to this. No, let him, let the wind of the Holy Spirit move some things out of your life. He wants to help you. As a Christian, you cannot afford to not live with the Holy Spirit. Is this making sense? I'm older now, and so for many things that I preach, I always have an example, an illustration. I, I, I could give you illustrations all day long of how God has blessed me. Is this making sense? Because even when you don't know what to do, the Holy Spirit is there to help you to figure out what to do, how to do, how much to do. 
I don't know if you've ever been involved in a conversation and the conversation turned where you were about to start talking about something you didn't need to talk about. And you heard the Holy Spirit saying, that's enough. Y'all don't want to talk to me. It's funny how he can blow in that like, that's enough. And he wants to blow the other stuff out of your life. And, and some of us obeyed and some of us kept talking because we thought we were in the middle of a joke. And we wanted to make sure that we got our, our point across and this, that, and the other. And, or you could have a disagreement with your spouse and, and you can hear the Holy Spirit saying, that's enough. It takes two to argue. I want you to be quiet. And you're like, no, no, no. She's going to hear me. The Holy Spirit is here to help. He's here to help. When, when you don't know what to do, the Holy Spirit is here. Pastor Randy, how do you know this and how do you know that? How do, I don't. I, I have to pray to God just like you have to pray to God. Pastor Randy, when are we going to move, get our church? Are we going to get a building? Are we going to get property? Are we gonna, I, I don't know. I just got this unction that I think is going to come this way. And I'm, I'm just believing God just like you believe in God. A lot of times we want to get a specific word from God, but we don't want to understand the general word that God has already given. I find as a pastor that people don't want to get involved in reading scripture and talking to God on a regular basis, but then when they have to make a decision, should I marry this person? Should I marry him? Should I marry her? Should I get married at all? Should I accept this job? Is it in Texas? Is it in Kansas City? Is it here? Is it there? Should I move? I need to pray because I need to hear God's voice. Here's a secret. Usually the specific words from God will come from understanding the general words of God. And, and if you don't understand the general words of God, it's going to be difficult for you to hear God when you need a specific word from God. Right? Should I marry him? Should I not marry him? Should I marry her? Should I not marry her? Well, let's go back and see what the general words of God says about you even being in a relationship. Oh, y'all don't want to talk to me. Because, see, there's guidance for being in a relationship, a Christian relationship. Do we touch? Do we kiss? Do we get intimate? Do we? And now you're concerned, like, should I marry this person? God wants to go all the way back and say, this is what the general guidance is. So if you can do that, then let's pray about the specifics. Because you're trying to make a, a decision on where you are right now. And where you are right now is not where he wanted you to be, even according to the general word. How many know just because you live together? Doesn't mean that you're married. Oh, you're preaching good. I know I'm preaching good. I know I'm preaching good. And so now you're saying, like, should we get married? And God is saying, let's go all the way back to this is what it should look like in the beginning. Because if, if you didn't have all of your feelings in the middle of this, you could see clearly on what decision to make. But sometimes when you open up this canister... You can't put the lid back on, and now it affects all of your feelings. Because we find that we make more decisions based on how we feel about something as opposed to the Word of God. Do you know the Word of God gives guidance on finances and stewardship and relationship and forgiveness and love and how to treat other people? The Word of God gives guidance on all of that, and then the Holy Spirit helps you with the specific issues that you have that's his role years ago I was given an opportunity to accept a job in Dallas Texas and it was going to be probably 10 to 12 thousand dollars more than what I was making and it was going to be a supervisor's position and no matter how I tried to make that thing work it just would not work I'd like, if I go down Sunday after church, I could stay in a hotel, 
one night and then I could be there and then I could come back Wednesday on Bible study nights. And I was, I was, trying, I was trying to make it work. I was trying to make it work. And it just never would work. Have you ever tried to make something work and it just would not work? No matter how hard you try to make it work, it just would not work. So then we have a dilemma. Is this the enemy attacking me? And do I just need to be a little bit more stronger in what I'm wanting to do? Or is this God telling me, don't do it? Who helps you make those decisions? Because that's a specific question that you have. And so when I became quiet, I heard the Holy Spirit say, it's not for you. And I said, I don't want to leave, you know, twelve to $15,000 on the table. What do you mean it's not for me? Check, Lord, are you sure? And he told me this. If you do what I ask you to do, you'll never have an issue with money. That's what he told me. That whatever you lose, I'll make it up for you. So then I said, well, how are you going to make it up for me? He's like, that's my business. And I will tell you that whatever money we have lost out on because of moving and this, that, and the other, God Turn to your neighbor and tell them this if you're bold enough. Money ain't everything. I know some of y'all didn't say it. Some of y'all didn't say it. Say money ain't everything. Money ain't everything. When, When God is telling you this and money is talking to you over here, money is not. God wants you to spend your life parapateoing him. To be intense about getting all of your bases covered. You know, because there are some people, and we, we allow God in our lives on Sunday mornings. But we do not allow a walk in the spirit Monday through Saturday. So we walk in the flesh. Monday through Saturday, and then we walk in the spirit for two hours on a Sunday, and we want a specific word when God is saying, i got a general word Monday through Saturday for you, but you failed to give me time in your life to develop this word in you. And then you want something in two hours that's going to totally revolutionize your life. And God is saying, I've been trying to talk to you Monday morning, Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning, Thursday morning, Friday morning, Saturday morning. And then you came to church and you were still halfway distracted when you were in church. And you only heard 30 minutes of an hour sermon. And you want to go out with like, well, Lord, I need you to talk to me. And he said, I've been trying to talk to you. Why do we need God to talk to us through circumstances all the time when he's given us his Bible? Do you know when you do not heed what the Bible says, then God talks to you other ways? But at the end of the day, you will hear his voice. Oh, I'm going to step in this. I'm going to step in this right quick. You hear his voice when you're about to pick up that second piece of chocolate cake. Can I get a witness in here? You plainly heard his voice saying, that's enough. That that third piece of cheesecake, you heard his voice saying, that's enough. With all all of the candy that's left over at the end of this month, He said, throw it away, and you're like, no, I'm just going to leave it here and just because, because. Is it just me? But I'm, I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is so close. Until when you're eating, he'll say, that's enough for you. And we're the ones that keep. 
And then we want a specific word on should I have surgery because this is what the doctor is saying now and this should I and I, I want to believe God and God is saying I gave you general guidance back here. I still love y'all. I, I still, because we're going to pray for you and we're going to believe the best for you. But when he tells you that's enough, that's enough. And then he'll say, why don't you sign up for the impact fitness class? You need to do that. And you're like, the devil is a lie. <laughs> and it could be the Holy Spirit talking to you. Don't you know that the body was made to move? Not to sit. It's made to move. Whether you walk a quarter mile, half a mile, whether you walk from the bedroom to the kitchen to wherever, the body is made to move. Amen. Think about all of the voices that you hear, all of the conversations that the Holy Spirit is trying to talk to you about just in daily living. Yes. Daily living. Amen. And I want to help you zero in on his voice because you know it's not your voice. It's not your voice saying you had enough to eat. It, it's, it's, it's not your voice that says like, you need to go around this way today to work and not this way to work. It's, it's not your voice. It's the Holy Spirit wanting to talk to you. Say walk in the Spirit. Because this may be a new concept to some people. Like, like walking in the spirit, how do, I, how do I do that? How do I accomplish that? That's going to be the great thing about this sermon series. Because I want to make sure that everyone is at a point that you're able to hear his voice. Hear his voice. Because we all have those specific prayers that we're asking God for, for which we need an answer. I need an answer. But it's going to come through the general voice of God. Before David was crowned king, the specific, he was doing the general. Before Moses was talked to by God about being a deliverer, he was in Egypt doing what God had had him to do at that point in time. And then God moves him to the desert. So he's doing that uh, at that point in time. And then God calls him to do something specific, but it comes out of the general. Some people can't even do the general. If the Lord prompted you to get up every morning from 6 to 6.05 and give him five minutes, could you do it for more than a week? And, and before you answer, before you answer, because we're getting ready to have, you know, getting ready to go into another year, and you're going to get some New Year's resolutions. How long do your New Year's resolutions last? <laughs> so it said a couple of days. I'm, I'm done. I'm <laughs> I had allergies all week this week, so, so pray for me. I want us all to understand that the Holy Spirit has what's best for you. He's got what's best for you. He has what's best for you. We need to put our trust in him. That if we hear something from the Holy Spirit, we write it down and analyze it, meditate on it, and to say, do you want me to do this now or tomorrow or when will this, when will this happen? But not, not just ignore him. Amen, amen. He's talking every day. Yes. All the time. Yes. All the time. Y'all don't want to talk to me. All the time. Amen. When people are flirting with you, the Holy Spirit is talking. Uh -huh. I got one aha uh -huh on that. But don't. when people are trying to push up on you, the Holy Spirit is talking. Mm-mm. You're like, Jezebel, in the name of Jesus. He's talking, trying to keep you together.
trying to keep your marriage together, trying to keep your relationships together, trying to keep your friendships together. The Holy Spirit is the one who will come in and say, now, both of y'all can't be angry. You might have to be the first person to ask, like, to say, I'm sorry. The Holy Spirit put that in your heart. The Holy Spirit may not have put that in the other person's heart, whether it's your friend, whether it's your spouse, whether, whoever it is. And then you have the audacity to say, no, I'm not going to say nothing until they say something to me first. Can you imagine how you would feel if you were always giving somebody good advice and they kept scorning your advice? You know what most of us would do? We would say, I'm done with you. I told you this, I told you that, I told you this, I told you that, I told you this, and you never, you did. So then you're like, I'm done. Thank God the Holy Spirit is not like that. He still keeps coming. The Bible says this in the book of John. I'm going to leave you with this. John chapter 3, verse 1, it says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old. Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Put my verse up. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of Jews. See, so it doesn't matter. See, walking in the spirit is not based on your education. So Nicodemus was a Pharisee. Pharisee were the people who helped who write the law. They were the ones who were stuck on the oral tradition of the law. They were the ones, they were the lawyers. They were the ones that were always trying to entrap Jesus. Right, And so the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and Nicodemus was a Pharisee. The Bible says, name Nicodemus a ruler of the Jews. Ruler actually means that he had a place sitting on the Sanhedrin council. The Sanhedrin council would be likened to our Supreme Court today. So not only was he a Pharisee who helped write laws like a lawyer, right? He also was noted to be on the Sanhedrin council because most Supreme Court justices started out as lawyers. Is this making sense? But just because you're educated does not mean you know what the Spirit of God is. So he was Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The Bible says this, this, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God because nobody can do all the stuff that you're doing except God be with him. So notice he comes at night because he doesn't want his other prominent people, his friends, to see him coming to Jesus. He's smart. He's educated. Verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus said, How can I be born when I am old? Jesus is talking to him about spiritual things. But Nicodemus does not understand spiritual things because it's all been natural and fleshly for him. Sometimes, if the Holy Spirit wants to talk to you, you can't receive it in your flesh. So he said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter into the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus is like, man, will you grow up? Verse 5. Go back to me, verse 5. So he said, Verily I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. 
it's difficult to live the majority of your life in the flesh and then want to birth something in the spirit. In fact, according to scripture, it's impossible because that which is born of flesh is flesh. So if Monday through Saturday I live all of my life in the flesh, it's going to be difficult for God to birth something in me in the spirit on one day. This, is, this, is this making sense? So, so if all of my friends are fleshly and all of the music that I listen to is fleshly. I was, I was, I was listening to the radio the other day and I think it was a song by, I think it was Ed Sheeran. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right. But all, his song was like, I just want your body. That's, that's all. He's like, yeah, I, I think of you and your, your, my sheets smell like you. And he never said, like, I love you. He just said, I love your body. And if you listen to that all single, all day, it's going to be difficult to birth something in the spirit. Now, now, do you have to be, oh, holy, holy, dressed from the white down from the top to, no, but I'm saying you've got to at least give God some time. Because that which is born of flesh is flesh. And that which is born of spirit is spirit. In fact, the Bible says that the natural mind is enmity against God. It says the natural mind can't understand the things that God wants to give you through the spirit. These are sermons that I want to preach in our church. But people have to be at a point that they want to understand spiritual things. And not just cars and homes and jobs and money and relationships. And God wants to talk to you, man. He, he wants to build you up. He wants to make sure that when you go around people, you're able to touch them for the sake of the gospel. And that they have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. That when you go into work, you become the light. That when you go to the car wash, you become the light. When you come to choir rehearsal, you become the light. You don't fall into the fleshly pattern that everybody else has slumped into, but you're like, oh, no, 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 no. The Spirit of God is in me. The same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead also lives in your mortal body. And he wants to walk with you. I'm going to say this and, and I'm going to be finished. This is going to help some people. Back in 2001, I went away for training and I had uh, accepted a job offer where I actually was in law enforcement for 20 plus years. And I remember going to a place called Glencoe, Georgia. That's where the training facility was and I was gone for several months. But, you know, and there's a story in that, how I prayed and asked God, like, is this the right thing for me to do, right? To, to be a preacher and then also to be in law enforcement. It's kind of, you know, like, you know, you put people in handcuffs and then you say, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going I'm to I'm pray for you. Y'all are laughing, but I have, I've done it. Just, I mean, this is real life. Because, I mean, when we arrested people, it just wasn't worldly people. They're deacons, too. It hurt my heart when we found out, like, this man was a deacon in his church. So I talked to the attorney. I'm like, what can, what can we do? I'm like, and at some point, then it's out of your hands, right? So, but I'll never forget when I was in training and we graduated, the instructor, and he was looking at me and other people, and he said, y'all are graduating today, and now y'all can legally carry a badge and a gun. And we was happy. I got my badge, got my gun. Y'all don't want to talk to me. 
And so, and so some days I still carry it just because, you know, I'm retired now, but I'm like, sometimes I just like to have it just right there on my chest, right? So go back and look at my picture, like still look at my picture. And he said, I want you all to be careful because he was talking to the men and he was talking to the ladies. He said, because there are some people who are attracted not to you, but they are attracted to a badge and a gun. And I didn't understood, I didn't understand what, what he meant. Because I was married. And I'm like, don't nobody want me but Tarsha. <laughs> Until you come around people, and I remember there were various protection assignments we had, and you know, it just looked just like the movies, you know sunglasses, talking into your sleeve, had the earpieces in, and people were coming by and they were looking and they're like, what, like what's your name? What's, who are you? And, 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 and are you married? And I'm like, but then I realized that sometimes people are attracted to a badge and a gun, but then other people may be attracted to a uniform. Other people may be attracted to a professional sports player. Other people may be attracted to people with benefits. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Other, other people may, they, I mean, the attractions just come. But it's the Holy Spirit who says, no, 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 no. What's your name? Nunyan. I'm like, girl, you don't, you don't even want to meet my wife. I'm, I'm just, I'm telling you. She, she paid a huge price for what I'm looking like now. So, you know, because some people are attracted to married men. They feel like I don't have to train them because they already know. Some people are attracted to older men. Some people are attracted to younger men. Y'all don't want to talk to me in here this morning. See, the Holy Spirit is the one who will tell you like, mm-mm, mm-mm, get back in the car. See, y'all think I'm old, but there was a date I wasn't old. People like, woo-hoo, I remember pumping gas. People like, where you come from? I'm like, girl, go on, well, I'll spray you with this. Spray you with this thing. You're about to get me in trouble, and you're going to get beat down. You just don't have a clue. So just because you have a ring on doesn't mean that people won't flirt. And they won't try to push up on you. Just making sense. It's ladies and men. I'm helping you this morning. 32 years of marriage. God knows how to do it, but you're going to have to listen to the Holy Spirit. You're going to have to listen to the Holy Spirit. There are sometimes the Holy Spirit will say like, no, you can't be around them. Ooh, y'all, y'all don't want Sometimes the Holy Spirit will say, like, no, you can't be around them. You, you can't be around them. I remember there was a time that I went home and I was talking to, to Tarsha. I'm going to tell you this and we'll be finished. And she was, she was saying, I think so-and-so is, like, flirting with you. We were in church. And I'm like, no, that, she ain't flirting. She ain't flirting with me. She's like, boy, stop. I, I think I know flirting when I see flirting. And, and I wanted to be a little bit naive and go, not, that couldn't be, no, that's just, no. And sure enough. So it don't matter if you're a preacher. Some people are attracted to preachers. Does this make sense? And you're like, the Holy Spirit has to talk to you. And when he talks to you, you've got to listen I believe that before anyone relapses, you've heard from the Holy Spirit. Telling you not to do it, telling you to stop, telling you to stop, end it right here. So, so you can get like Joseph, just leave your coat and run. <laughs> run as fast as you can. You can live the fight another day. We'll stand on our feet.
There are some of us who should not even be here today. If it were not for the voice of the Holy Spirit. Some of you, God has brought out of crack houses, brought you out of clubs, brought you out of car wrecks where you were driving drunk. And then, and then there were some of us that were on their way into an explosion and God said, don't, don't go. And when you think about those times, I thank God for the power of the Holy Spirit. That my wife didn't have to be a widow. That my son and daughter didn't have to grow up without a father. It was just through listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit told me that day to go back to work, he wasn't yelling. He wasn't screaming. It wasn't an audible voice. I just felt the prompting that said, you need to go back to work. And he used a sermon that I had just spoke the Wednesday, the week before, to convince me not to steal time because he realized that the enemy was trying to steal my life. Hey, we want to thank you for watching our broadcast today. We hope that something was said that would give you encouragement, something that will help you strengthen your walk with Jesus Christ. Our goal is to cover the entire earth with the knowledge of Jesus Christ. If this message has been a blessing to you, just let us know. Leave us a comment in the line. Give us a thumbs up. And so until the next time, God bless you.